are tuning in on Instagram and those of you who are on YouTube, good evening, good evening, good evening, welcome, 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 all streams, we are going fully live and direct, four different ways and uh, you know, if you know anything about Yvonne Michelle, she just likes to push the boundaries, so we are going live in four different ways. So if you are watching me live and you see me on different, looking at different cameras, don't feel that way, I am talking to you. And those of you who are on the www. I want to welcome you and thank you for joining us each and every week. This week uh, is the start of Sickle Cell Awareness. So today we have some powerhouses in the studio we do i'm super excited of the women that i have here today now one of my guests is not able to make it today her mum's not well and so she's not been able to make it she would have flown in from scotland and that was christina from dmd um Ray, dmd talk show which is on ben tv but she will be here in a few weeks time so for those of you who are on, on our facebook Good evening, those of you on Instagram, good evening, and those of you who are on our YouTube as well as www. Good evening to you. So, like I say, we are on, we're going fully, fully in, and I've got some really, really amazing guests today. Now, sickle cell is um, something that affects mainly, I would say, those in the black community, uh, be African, Caribbean, um, English born, uh, those of us who are uh, called black people, it mainly affects us and um, so there may be somebody within your family who has um, the ailment of sickle cell. So we're going to be talking about, um, that we're going to be raising awareness as well, we're also going to be talking about how we, um, how we help each other as a community. So you might hear some things going on in the studio. We're just going to get ready so that those who are um, watching us can see our guests as well. So I will be turning the camera, for those of you who are on Facebook and Instagram, I will be turning the camera around so that you guys can see. And I'll just lift this up because it looks like I've got like a... Can you hear me okay in the studio? Okay, wonderful. So as I was saying before, we are talking about sickle cell awareness. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to bring in one of our guests each at a time and then we're all going to collaborate and, and speak together. Then we're going to have questions and answers. Um, if you, so if you do have any questions about sickle cell, um, please do put it on the thread. For those of you who are on the www dot, you can contact us on, uh, on the number of 07908-974-543. Um, that's 07908974543. You can contact us there or you can go into the chat room and you can put um, all your questions in the chat room as well. So we've got people here, we've got a lovely team here working with me to make this run smoothly today. All right. So, <clears throat> so my first guest I'm going to introduce to you as, um, is also a radio host. She's also a radio host. Uh, she's an international speaker, author of uh, Fight for Your Dreams, uh, The Power of Never Giving Up. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. that's correct. She's a radio presenter and sickle cell empowerment coach. Her name is Charmaine Smith. Um, Charmaine has a passion for uplifting young people, the next generation of leaders and coaching those who want to improve and live a healthier lifestyle. Charmaine has been trained and coached by motivational speaker Des Brown since 2007. She is a noted public speaker, health advocate, youth impact coach, and best-selling author of Fight For Your Dreams, The Power Of Never Giving Up with Deb Brown. Her audiences are encouraged and empowered to fight for their dreams despite life's challenges. Charmaine will empower you to deliver your story with power and conviction and inspire the still small voice within you to say, if they can do it, I can do it. She is the host of her own talk, a radio talk show of, sorry, talk show of music, a 
and motivation, Charmé, aka Empress Divine, is a distinguished communicator and coach in training your mind and body to achieve your dreams. Charmaine's heartfelt message of energy motivates audiences to create a larger vision for their lives and fight for their dreams. Charmaine has found tremendous success coaching her clients into their greatness and taking back control of their lives. Now, you've got all of that. <laughs> let, me, <laughs> let me introduce Charmaine to you. So Charmaine, and if we can just get that camera to turn so that those of you who are at home and are watching can also see who we have in the studio. There you go, whoa. Okay, right, so if we turn that, sit, lovely. Wonderful, too much, too much, too much, too much, that's it, there we go. A little bit more. So if you come over a little bit more, Charmaine, that's it, we can get you in. And we have Peace here as well. So Peace is gonna be talking to us a little bit later. We don't wanna disclude her, she is here with us as well. So. We are all here together, a powerhouse of women in the studio. Sorry, guys. Those of you who are there. So, Charmaine, welcome. Thank you, everyone. It's nice to be back home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been a while. Okay. <laughs> Gosh, I haven't seen you for a while, but you look absolutely amazing. Thank you very much. Likewise, ladies. <laughs> and gentlemen. <laughs> Can't forget the guys in, in, in the studio. In the studio. So Charmaine, right, what we're going to talk about, we are here to talk about sickle cell, however, yeah. we are also here to talk about you mm -hmm. and what you do and how you inspire okay. um, others uh, uh, who are um, struggling mm -hmm. with, with sickle cell, or not even. Yes. Um, so we're here to have quite an open conversation about um, what you do and to promote you as well, okay. promote what you do, because, you know, Charmaine is a best-selling author so we are here to promote that book as well you know so so you know we've heard the bio yeah but Charmaine tell us a bit about yourself tell us where you started from because I always like to get the backstory okay so my journey has been I wanted to study law so I've studied law I've got my postgraduate diploma in legal practice I've got my law degree okay. but in the last year of my law degree I fell pregnant with my eldest daughter who's now 18. Okay. I found out at the time that I had sickle cell trait, okay. but I had already known that her dad had sickle cell trait. Right. So there was a one in four chance that I would have a child born with sickle cell, mm -hmm. one in four chance that a child would have normal hemoglobin, AA, and two in four chance that, like myself, the child would have sickle cell trait. So in 2000, October 2000, I had my child. And three months later, they do a blood test. Mm -hmm. So I found out when she was three months old that she had full-blown sickle cell. Okay. So it was heart rendering. I do know that sickle cell trait was in the family, but no one in the family had full blown sickle cell. So I knew my grandmother had sickle cell trait, didn't know my mother had trait, mm -hmm. and I would say out of ignorance, sort of, you know, it's not going to be me, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of thing. New fam um, friends at school that had sickle cell. So yeah, I was 20 <coughs> at the time when I found out she had sickle cell trait. Um, but it didn't throw me because my family is quite forward thinking. So they don't, you know, they always say, always say to us, you know, the sick aren't closest to the grave. So don't worry about it. Just do what you can to make a better life for your child. So my daughter is now 18 and she has a lot of fetal hemoglobin, they say, in her blood. So even though she has a crisis, she doesn't have as severe crisis as some sickers. So she's HBSS which is supposed to be the most severe form of sickle cell. But I know people even in my motivational team and my Forever Living Products team that have HBSC, which is supposed to be a minor form of sickle cell, and their sickle cell impacts them more. So what I would say is that even when you find out you have sickle cell trait or you've got full-blown sickle cell, it's not something to worry about. I call them sickle cell warriors. Because right. at the end of the day, they're fighting pain ad hoc. And it doesn't stop my daughter from living her dreams or pursuing her dreams. Hence why in my book, Fight for Your Dreams, The Power of Never Giving Up, I do share my story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do share my story about raising a child with sickle cell and also how it's changed my life. The only thing I would say is, as a parent or a carer, 
it sometimes will affect you in that your normal daily activities can get affected. So sometimes things like going out to work. Yeah. I do radio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going out to work. People are on school, college, nursery, sometimes mm -hmm. the lack of understanding. So my power and my purpose is to raise more awareness about the illness. And okay. It's heartfelt from my heart because I know what my daughter goes through. I know yeah. what families go through, how it affects the other children. Because mm -hmm. sometimes the younger children don't understand. Mummy's gone, sister's in hospital, what's happening? So yeah. my purpose and my conviction is to tell my story to help inspire and encourage others that you can make it through. Mm -hmm. I'm also part of Facebook, so I'm on some of the sickle cell mummies. Mm -hmm. um, Facebook group so I tend to go on there occasionally at night when I'm going to my bed and just give them encouragement yeah even there was a sickle in America somewhere I can't remember where but the mom was quite frantic about the child being in intensive care so I was sending my prayers of encouragement mm -hmm. and told her to call me and and she actually thanked me there um about two years ago she was like I'm praying to the angel that was sending her prayers and oh. so for me, because I know what people experience, mm. I can speak from a carer's point of view, but when it comes to sickle cell itself, having a patient or seeing somebody that you know that's curled up in a ball, you know, it's in severe pain, nine out of 10, diamorphine, codeine phosphate, short of breath. But all of these things led me to um, a gentleman called Dada Jones, right. who's a holistic healer, and he has sickle cell himself. And peace, we did a sickle cell event in Tottenham, Mm -hmm. three years ago and we invite peace along to speak and cheryl phoenix as well cheryl phoenix is part of um black child black child, child agenda black child agenda her partner actually passed with sickle cell and um yeah we just raised did awareness and raised some funds so what i would say to people is just encourage you to just seek support mm -hmm. and sometimes like in our community we don't really talk about these things so this is a good thing yeah. that you're mm -hmm. doing here we don't really talk about it so um, a lot of stigma, Yeah. people misunderstanding sometimes culturally as well, mm -hmm. they think it's a curse, but far from it. One thing that my daughter's teacher said to her, you have a special body, okay. so you have to look after that special body. Yeah. And I thought that was really sweet because at the time she was trying to struggling with what she was going through. And then she, the other, when she came back from carnival, we were sitting on the bed and she goes, mum, there's this girl on Instagram. And she just put up her story about sickle cell and I just knew when I read what she, she wrote that she had sickle cell. Right. Just from her experience and what she was going through because okay. with mental health as well, it can yeah, affect it, you that way as well. It will affect it. Yeah. it. When you're ill, I know any illness, illness. Yeah. Yeah. can it affect um, your mental health. Do you know what? Because you've mentioned peace, I'm going to bring peace in. Yes. And I think this conversation... Um, will be a little bit different from the conversations that we normally have. Because normally I'd introduce one guest, yes. we'd have talk, 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 and then I'd introduce another talk, 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 and then at the end we'd kind of like just do like question and answer. But I think because of what it is, mm -hmm. um, and the experiences that you've both had, I think it would be more beneficial to just have the conversation. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to introduce Peace. Peace is on your camera, you can see her. <laughs> and those of you who are on the www dot, you can't see, but if you want to see, you can go on Facebook, you can go on Instagram, or you can go on YouTube. Facebook link should be up. Yeah, the Facebook link is up. YouTube um, is Yvonne Michelle Inspires. And I believe the Instagram is probably Yvonne Michelle and not the radio, but never mind. Because <laughs> I have a, I do have a page specifically for the radio. And sometimes post on the other one. one. By accident. So sorry. Uh, so sorry for those of you. So if you do want to get in touch, do do share with your friends and family and let them know, especially if you know somebody who suffers with sickle cell. This, um, today's conversation is for everyone because I do believe that sickle cell has an impact on most of our lives somewhere down the line. I have a sickle cell um, in my family, um, not directly my children, but my nephews have, a couple of my nephews have sickle cell. We carry thalassemia, I carry thalassemia. So it's similar to sickle yeah. cell and you have to... Yeah, yeah. So when I was pregnant with my, my daughter, my son and my daughters, I should I say, I was tested, um, dad was tested, 
and then we had the test done on on baby while well, baby the was still. I had amnio with um, my son, and then I had a CVS with my daughter. Oh, wow. So I knew very early on with my daughter whether or not, and you know, um, neither one of them have the trait or or um, or blood sickle cell. So, um, but for my sister, my sister's story is completely different. So two out of the three boys that she has has sickle cell, and her daughter has the sickle cell trait. Okay. So um, there's only one who. Hasn't been affected, yeah. really. Mine's the opposite. One's affected, and the other two have sickle cell trait, like myself. Right. Yeah. Okay. So my when I had my son three year, three and a half years later, I did the amniocentesis because I want to be I wanted to be prepared. prepared. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So then the third child, then I was thinking, oh gosh, what should I do? But one of my s team members, Sheridan, Sheridan, yeah, Sheridan, Sheridan yeah. <laughs> said to me, well, if my mum thought like you, I wouldn't be here. So, you know, sometimes the doctors yeah, encourage you yeah, to do yeah, other things. Yeah. And I was thinking, you know, like three children, you know, partner's not very supportive. So mm. when she made that statement, I thought, you know what? That one, I didn't even get tested anything mm. until wow. she was born. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I think sometimes, I mean, I don't know what your experiences were when you were having children. Mm -hmm. But I know that when, um, after it was after, because my, my middle son, he passed away. And when he passed away... There was a, a pocket of time where they were trying to say, well, could he have had, could it have been sickle cell, could it have been, yeah. but there was nothing. And I said, well, hold on a minute, because mm. we have the amniocentesis results here. Yeah. Yes. You yes. Know? yes. And he was past six weeks, you know, so he'd had blood tests already. Yes. So, so you know, yeah. we, we need to rule this out here. But I do know that when, when I was pregnant with my daughter, because of all of that that had happened, they were like, well, you know, do you really want to go through yeah. with this? You know, you have other options and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no. We're doing the test so I know. Yes. Mm. I just want to know yeah. what I'm up against. Yeah. You know, and that's it. Mm -hmm. I'm having this baby. Yes. Because you can't be telling me, after I've lost one, you can't be telling me to, 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 yeah, to yeah. do other things. So so yeah. That doesn't make no sense to no. me. Mm. But all I want to know is, what, does she have it? Well, I didn't know if it was boy or girl there. Does this baby have sickle cell or not? Or is it the trait? I just want to know so I can prepare myself throughout my pregnancy and know what I've got to do. And I've got to get all of my knowledge in intact so I know exactly what I'm doing when this baby comes. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, for, for, for me it was, you know, she has, she has no trait. She has no sickle cell. And she's now nearly 21. She'll be 21. <laughs> so she's a big one. You know, so, you know, so, you know, I, I'm grateful for the experience. But I know back then they didn't have that much knowledge. Yeah. And they didn't test because I test. lived on the outskirts of London and no knowledge of sickle cell. Mm. My mum, they, uh, look, I got tested when I was 21, mm. 20 going on 21. I didn't know I had sickle cell. They didn't do the test then. Mm pilot study happened in 2006 mm -hmm. and I took part in the pilot study in central London after the 7-7 bombings right. and that's when they were encouraging people to get tested before buying that your part a little too late but you, do you yeah. know what I mean but yeah. at least it's it's happening so now I know they're rolling it out a lot yeah. and yeah. promoting people to get tested but even so you don't always because I've got a friend she has sickle cell trait I said to her when I had her goddaughter mm -hmm. which has sickle cell go and test your partner she had a child 2015, no, 14. And both her and her partner have sickle cell trait. Wow. wow. The child didn't come with full blown sickle cell, just sickle cell trait as mm -hmm. well. So, but they say there's things that you can do to alter. I have members in my Forever Living team that has got sickle cell, and they say, my mum used to eat a lot of yam when she was pregnant, but they do say African yam, cassava, um, lots of grains, good to manage it. And when my daughter was, a baby, mm -hmm. she didn't get any processed food. Right. I was boiling up yam, I was boiling up sweet potato, cassava. Indirectly, I was giving her broccoli, cauliflower. Broccoli's got folic acid, and they right. used to eat folic acid supplements to mm. take. So, without <coughs> building up their immune system. Mm. And even with Peace, Peace did an event which we attended, and yeah. I was one of her speakers. <laughs> that was back in 2013 or 12. Yeah, it's quite a while, but we've known since then mm -hmm. I mean so before we go there mm -hmm. tell us about you first because I I'm there chatting chatting <laughs> <laughs> we forgot about it <laughs> to find out 
Oh, it's me. It's, so, it's such an interesting and intriguing uh, conversation, so you just get overwhelmed. But my name is Peace Adetoro. I'm the author of A World Without Sickle Cell. And this book came about uh, yeah. due to um, me starting to create Sickle Cell Awareness back in 2012. And um, my experience of sickle cell was back when we were, I think I was a teenager, my, obviously my parents, they divorced and my dad remarried and uh, my stepmother also had the trait. So she had two children at a very young age that died, at, uh, well it was sickle cell, but at the time like, we was quite ignorant to the, what the disease was. And um, I think it was actually, well there, this is going over about 30 years ago, I was talking about now. And so uh, I remember one back in 2012, I was talking to, um, talking to my dad. Well, I met a friend of mine. We went for a, a reunion, and uh, she was. We went to her house, and she was kind of housebound. Mm -hmm. And you, I kind of didn't really want to ask what was wrong with her because she looked really sick, but I just didn't feel comfortable asking the question. So after we had finished the reunion, I called a friend and um, asked her, "Oh, what's wrong?" With you know, her, her name was Gumi. And uh, she said, oh, she has sickle cell. And I thought, sickle cell? I've never seen anyone that looked like that that had sickle cell. I mean, I know they've, I've seen people with sickle cell, but they've either died at a very young age. But I've never seen anyone that, you know, was in a wheelchair, housebound, you could just about walk. So it was quite amazing. So I started to read up on sickle cell, went on YouTube to see mm -hmm. if there was anything like that. And, um, I couldn't actually see anything that has worked with that. When I started to read that, it affects the internal organs, and that's probably what would happen to her. Yeah. And then I thought, oh my God, this is really serious. And then I, um, in my research, I met a doctor called Dr. Ken, who was stud doing his um, uh, uh, master's in Holland. And I invited him over to the UK just to, to give us some more knowledge. I've got um, the interviews with him on YouTube, on my YouTube page as well. And he sort of gave me the breakdown of how sickle cell, you know, can affect lives and is really devastating. Because for me, it's something that's been, uh, the traits have been in my family. I had two people, two t uh, half sisters that died of sickle cell, but didn't really, you know, connect or have the, because I was so young at the time, so yeah. I didn't really know what it was. And so uh, it's only after that I started creating, when we met uh, Charmaine in 2012, I did a, um, a hair show, natural hair show, which I had the speakers show Charmaine and a few people come and talk about sickle cell. Mm. And then from there it just exploded and I just know a lot of people are very sick and they're unable to create awareness. So what I used to do was go out and do all the jumping out of the planes, swimming with sharks. It wasn't even, to me, it wasn't even about raising the money. It was creating that awareness mm. but when you said oh when I said to people oh I'm going to jump out of the plane they're thinking jump out of the plane why and then they want to know why, why? then I've got to explain why I'm doing it and then they can I mean every all the places that I've worked every single one of them have had sickle cell you know awareness drummed into them so they all know about and that's for black and white they're all interested and intrigued okay. and um it's sometimes it gets very frustrated when you feel that a lot of black people don't get involved or they just feel it doesn't affect them directly so they have other issues or other things that they want to talk about if it's maybe it could be cancer or other diseases which is fair enough yeah. but I just feel to me I feel like oh, oh, oh we're gonna come back after the break sorry <laughs> <laughs> sorry we've got the break <laughs> yeah. are we yeah. all right yeah, yeah. Can, oh, okay. piece of paper asks, um, Oh, yeah, every week I'm like making them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> or oh, some cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I used to be like 30 seconds, but I haven't got any paper on me. So guys, those of you who are listening, um, we are at a, co a commercial break at the moment. Those of you who are on Instagram, Facebook and um, YouTube, um, we are on a commercial break at the moment. So we will be back. So please hold that, what you were hold saying. <laughs> I need to prop this up a bit. Yeah, I wanna I move this over. I'll just if we could get a 
Yeah. Yeah. Ladies, look up for the cue. If I'm like that, or three minutes, it means, yeah. 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 Okay. So if I move my chair over here, I think it will get in. It'll be better. Okay. I can help you stay where you are, and I can move more over. Yes, that's. I just tip this over, guys. Oh, it looks really good. No, I need to straighten it. Because it won't go. There we go. We've done it. Yay! So you get it all, all on Facebook and Instagram. And you should, you get it all, you know, you get all the, the juice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get it all of the secret stuff. Mm -hmm. It's all here today. My, yeah, a minute and a half. So a minute and a half. Yeah, I'd be like a little play the music, that'd be a good idea. Yeah, play it in and then yeah. we'll, we'll do that. Yeah, that's 30 seconds in. And then you can carry on with what you were saying. What was I saying? I can't remember. Jumping out, jumping out, out of place, place. Okay, yeah. doing yeah. your um, yeah. 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 and also doing tabletops. I think you were talking about your brother Bumi was saying something. Yeah, my about. friend Bumi, yeah. yeah, yeah. What tabletops? You, I met you at the Adver in South London first. You had a table, you bought a table, um, Charmaine from Charmaine Simpson. Oh, oh Martin, yes. That's yeah, the first time I met you. Yeah. And she, she's doing tabletop, so I was doing my own She's also doing the tabletop on that. The world was that sick or so. Just promoting the awareness. She had her books. She had her badges. And she had her badges and leaflets and stuff like that. And how's she pronounced your surname? I'm just trying to think Italian. Everybody thinks Dr. Toro. Dr. Toro. Was it Charmaine? Charmaine said, I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Hi guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. <coughs> and welcome back to Conversations with Yvonne Michelle. Uh, we are here. I am here with Charmaine Simit. <laughs> or Smith. 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 And Peace. Adatoro, Adatoro, there you go, hello. <laughs> and uh, we've been talking about, it's Sickle Cell Awareness Month and we wanted to kick off the month to raise awareness for those who are suffering with sickle cell and those who are carers. And we wanted to raise more awareness um, throughout, not just within our community, but everywhere. Because I think it's something that, that everybody needs to know about, to have some understanding of how, <coughs> Sorry, people are living their lives and how difficult it can be. <coughs> so Charmaine kicked off. Now we're talking to Peace, and Peace was telling us about jumping out of a plane and swimming with sharks. And swimming with sharks. Well, <coughs> sorry, there are all my um, gimmicks to get people to get people's attention. I mean, then the, I was telling them I was going to parachute out of a plane. I mean, I was bricking it, but. I just thought it's something that I had to do and I had a lot of people coming on my page. I have a page called The World About Sickle Cell as well and people was like, oh, she's jumping out of a plane. I even had one um, Nigerian guy that had sent a message on my page to say, oh, well, there's so many um, people in Nigeria, so one less person alive will decrease wow. the population. <gasps> and I just thought to myself, this is a country that has got the biggest population of people with sickle cell, and this is the ignorance that you know people would would come on the, on Facebook and you know just it's comment. Show. Well, no, he wasn't. It, no, that was just his response to what I mean. After I did the event, I must admit they were all because he had a lot of people that was liking his comments, thinking that it was he had said something really you know fantastic. Mm. But I mean, after I had actually done the jump and I went back and. Said, put the video on that uh, it was in one of the Nigerian groups mm -hmm. and then the sort of the conversation sort of turned to different everybody was all yeah. praised and thinking mm. oh my god that she's done a wonderful thing for people with sickle cell and this and that mm. well. especially for someone like me that it doesn't affect me in any way no disrespect I mean I don't have my children don't have sickle cell we don't have the traits directly but I, like I said my parents 
have to take. At the time, I only thought it was my dad and the, my stepmother. But I remember one time when I uh, had finished having my conversation with the doctor about sickle cell, and I was like, so if people know that they've got the trait, why would they go into a relationship? So I came, you know, came home that day and had it out with my dad, and I was giving it all, giving it large. And how, you know, you're an engineer, you're a mechanical engineer, your wife it was a nurse, that you should know better. What, you know, why would you have a child with someone that you know had the trait? And I was, you know, going on. And he didn't say a word until I finished spewing my nonsense. And then he turned around and said, if that's the way I feel, I wouldn't be sitting here today. And I thought, what the hell are you talking about? And then he said that my mother also had the trait. I mean, I, oh. I was brought up by my dad, so I more or less didn't really have a relationship right. with my mother. So mm -hmm. I had no idea that my mother also had the trait. But he had, we had... I've got three, uh, two siblings, my brother and my sister. We, none of us had the trait, and none of us had sickle cell. So that kind of shot me in my tracks, knowing that you know I had to turn my whole way of thinking when it comes to you know relationships and people having the trait. And it's not for me. It turned into just putting the awareness out there and not laying blame on people mm. because that's how it is, I mean, as I'm, even when we're talking about ignorance in Nigeria, you've got a lot of people that lie about their, um, their status, they will tell you that they've got the traits, but just because they want to get married and then pray that the child doesn't right. have sickle cell, mm -hmm. rather than being honest with each other. So it's just a matter of trying to change the whole stigma of people with traits or people with sick, sickle cell. It's mm -hmm. just another, any child with sickle cell is just another special child as mm. far as I'm concerned. They have their own fights and things that they have to go with. And for me, it's all about raising, uh, bringing that awareness and fighting, because I love challenges. As people say to me, what motivates me? And there's always when I can go out there and motivate people. To me, I feel sickle cell is part of like a race thing because you, they feel like it just uh, mainly affects black people. Mm -hmm. They feel like they don't need to do anything about it. So that's the, what motivates me even more to put it out there. I remember making, having a, there was a, a post that I did back in 2012, and um, it was about um, a, 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 ma a white family who, she had three children, three children who had sickle cell. And I thought, how could, how could that happen? So I researched it. And I took the story and then I, put, I went to look for a picture on Google to see whether there was a mm -hmm. picture of the family. So I just saw one picture that came up, so I put it with my post. Because every time you write a post, a picture always seems to get, get more attention. attention. Yeah. So, oh God, that post came up with like <laughs> 20,000 people coming and I had comments. I had so much abuse on that post because that picture that I put up had yeah. nothing to do with the actual story. And I didn't know at the time. So mm -hmm. the actual family, because it went anyway, but mm -hmm. the family was in Florida. So when she found out about my post, she came onto my page and she was really angry. She was spitting back feathers. And I said to her, look, all I tried to do was create awareness to let people know that this is just not a black people's disease. It also can affect white people. Mm -hmm. I mean, people from the Italian, sure. mm -hmm. um, Italian. Yes, this yes. lady had an Italian background and that's why um, her kids had sickle cell. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're very, we're friends now. We're good friends. <laughs> <laughs> so she so yeah, all this trouble and then she becomes she friends. Very, very <laughs> good friends. But it, she but gave me the rights. Yeah, she gave me the rights to her story. I remember having to um, wrote that story for the Bedford um, University and the magazine. So she gave me the right to put, you know write that story up in the in their magazine. So mm. It brought the awareness and people especially in Africa, that thought, oh, white people get sickle cell. And mm. it brought a lot of people on, onto my page for that particular story. So that was something that really... Well, that kept, was a good thing, really. Mm. Yeah. Even you know. If I'd done maybe the real story, it probably wouldn't have really brought much attention. But because I had that picture, mm. that little controversy, yeah, it, it, like well, that. it caused a lot of issues. So a lot of people, I said, this is, were comments coming all the way from America, People was like saying, why don't you just get your facts right before you, you know, it was just... Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. it's, it's the same with Lita Dancina. Normally you're associated with yeah. Asians. Yeah. Mm. But I know that my nephew yeah. that passed yeah. away, they found out after he passed that he had Lita Dancina. Yeah. Yeah. And that yeah. test had never been done. So yeah. he was asthmatic, but he had also had Lita Dancina. 
Mm-hmm. And when my daughter was in hospital 2017, mm-hmm. so 13 days of a crisis, 9 out of 10 on dimorphine, it was horrible. Wow. My brother came and he actually opened up and told us at, the, at that time. They gave him a blood transfusion. Wow. Oh. So we don't know if he was born with it or mm-hmm. if it was via 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 the, the, the germs. Yeah. Wow. Because I ca- I carry a card. Oh, I've got a card too. Mm. Yeah. But it's in my passport. I don't carry me daily. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. no one really asks, have you got sickle cell? Should go to the doctors. Yeah. yeah. But also. With Trey, what I noticed is when I was younger, I used to get really out of breath. I mm-hmm. used to be very sporty, doing a lot of sports. I used, after I finished that, mm. and that's one of the things with sickle cell, mm-hmm. Trey, you can get out of breath and you still need to drink a lot mm-hmm. of water. water. So now I'm learning through my children yeah. what it is to have Trey, because yeah. my son has, and myself, we have Trey with symptoms. So mm-hmm. we start to age, age. I said, my yeah. body's oh, aching, yeah. or mm-hmm. I don't feel good, mm-hmm. and I'm, sometimes I just go to school. And then he, the school rings, they need to come and collect, come him. And collect him. Yeah. Or like now, before I left out, he was rubbing up his leg with heat lotion. So, yeah. change of weather. Weather, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And my daughter's like, yesterday came in, she's like, oh, I hate the summer. I said, you need to stop that. Mm-hmm. She said she prefers spring early going into winter because it, she says that she doesn't feel as tired. So, one of the things with sickle cell is you feel tired, lethargic. Mm-hmm. And in with that, because she's studying at college now, it's explaining to the college over and over again what this is, why her attendance may drop. Right. And for her, it affects them more in winter because mm-hmm. they're susceptible to illness, traveling on public transport, yeah. coughs, colds, can be detrimental. Do you find that the schools are understanding of the issues around sickle cell? No. <laughs> I'm trying to not, yeah. just be brutally honest, you know. No, not until you continually, continuously drum it into them. And when I mean, I've had to write letters, I've had to write emails, I've even had to move my daughter from her first high school because okay. of the ignorance mm. in that school. And the head teacher, I spoke with her about my daughter wearing her outside coat in winter. Mm-hmm. She can't be traveling from room to room, building to yeah. building with no coat. Had the meeting with her on the Friday, by the Monday, she's asking her why she's got her coat on in school. That was the last drop for me. I just said, I'm not risking losing my child because of your ignorance. Mm-hmm. And I just moved schools. Then the other school that she went to, Ofsted rating wasn't as good, but the pastoral support was better. Right. And she fared better. College, because college has got so many different people studying mm-hmm. so many different things, it's hard for them to just pinpoint one child mm-hmm. and say, yeah, she's got... So I've had to go in for meetings. I've got a folder full of sickle cell from when she was born. So I said, what information would you want? And I just started shelling it out mm-hmm. and giving them leaflets to mm-hmm. read about. Still, up until she left in June, still the same thing. So I've had to threaten them with dis- disability discrimination. Yeah. Because I said to them, you would not have be ringing a cancer patient and saying, are you coming in today? You wouldn't be ringing mm-hmm. somebody because sickle cell is something that doesn't show up. So it's one yeah, of those it's in, it's it, yeah, yeah, so be, yeah, it can yeah. hit at any time. So she can't predict that when she's going to be well and when mm-hmm. she's going to be sick. If she's sick, she's sick. And yeah. as far as I'm concerned, if you're sick, if you have sickle cell and you're sick, take the time to rest and recuperate. Yeah. Find something that's going to work for you, even like job wise. She's looking, she wanted to look for jobs and go and work for a particular company and finish late at night on her feet all day. I'm saying, well, how are you going to fare when you go to college the next day? It's going to impact you when you're going out now it takes you three days to recuperate mm. so that so you're basically saying is that that people who do have sickle cell can work but they have to find a way of navigating their lifestyle around yes the, yeah. the i would say find something that works for you so you know your body mm. so what can you do that is going to fit around that and have an understanding manager i think the first point of call is having the, ma- the meeting with the manager but sometimes they won't want to do that because it could be a risk of me not getting the job mm. discrimination so okay. with my daughter she tells me <coughs> to mention it and then she asks me why did you go and mention it mm. i said they have to know they because if to. anything happens they have to know what to yeah, do they have yeah. to know and it's not you make because sometimes she feels like she's making excuses i said you're not making excuses they have to know so that it reflects. I was also an education welfare officer. I had a number of clients that had um, sickle cell. 
one mother that had sickle cell very frail mm. affected her child differently because mm. she can't bring the child into school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Another child who was at um, primary school, the school was wanted to bring the mum to court. To court, yeah. And the child's wheelchair, wheelchair ran. So I'm saying, well, how have you managed a plan? Mm. I'll put a plan in place for that child. So manage the one that's sick. Mm. Yeah. 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 Both of them. Yeah. But these are the things that sometimes go amiss. And some, yeah. Yeah. So do you support uh, families and mothers or fathers who have children with sickle cell? I do. I advocate on behalf of them mm. because sometimes it's challenging working and having that in place. So I advocate on behalf of young people in general. Okay. even Because sickle cell is one thing. Recently a young person came to me, mental health issues, depression, we can't access a new course. So it's advocating on their behalf to make people more understanding and more aware. Because sometimes when you're going through it, it's hard to see past my child's in hospital, she's on morphine, she's having fluids. Mm-hmm. You, the last thing you want to think about is Contacting the school yeah. <laughs> or contacting the college or contacting work. Okay. Yeah. So if we're to put out here, for those who are listening, uh, watching, those of you who are on the WW dot, those of you who are on our live streams, if you are listening, and I know that I have a lot of silent listeners, so I see people say, Oh, mm-hmm. this is your chat. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, said nothing. Like, Anna, this is your show for me. I'm like, okay. So I know that we have some silent listeners out there. So if you are struggling um with this issue if you have a child who has sickle cell or thalassemia so that it's very very similar and you are struggling um, and you need an advocate to step in we have two wonderful ladies here well, actually three because i work with young people so i'm in a i work with young people but um here who are willing to help you because i think that one of the most frustrating things i think as a parent especially is when you have a child that's ill and the school is on your case yes, yes. and then or 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 the the, the organisation that's providing the education because I think they're misunderstood and because I, I work because of the work that I do I see it mm-hmm. and I've had dealings with a mother I just finished a, a placement and there was this conflict it's, it's mental health and um, we had this celebration and there's someone was there. When she came up, I was like, all right, how you do? It's on my Facebook, I know this. I'm like, what are you doing here? She's like, my son. And I'm like, no way. So I've been working with her son over a period of time, not realising, and then she started to say, but I had already had the backstory mm-hmm. from the organisation. What, the mo- mothers? Yeah. Right? So I'm like, okay, okay. But now I understand, I am, because, is because especially with our own people, mm-hmm. sometimes, because it's a constant battle, sometimes it does get your back up and you feel that you have to defend mm-hmm. your brood, your children, you've got to defend because no one else is defending That's why I'm kind of worrying. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what I'm saying is, if you are in that position and you need some support, um, do contact, um, you can contact Eliwar actually, because Charmaine is already on Eliwar, to DJ. Yeah, and press the vine, Fridays, when the time now, it's six, six or eight. And you can connect, <laughs> or you can connect with me on my Facebook fan page, Charmaine Smith, Fight for Your Dreams. I do put things about sickle cell um, empowerment. I am thinking of doing a sickle cell awareness event as well either the end of this month or if not in October. But I'm going to open it broader this time, not just sickle cell awareness, because just do it as a health event. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes people do not want to be stigmatised. They don't want to bring attention to themselves Mm -hmm. that they have sickle cell. So Mm -hmm. just come along. What I would say is just health events in general Mm. or health awareness events, go to them and find out because there's different things that you can. And even some of our Pempanzi in Brixton is a very good one. They can tell you, inform you about different herbs and roots mm. that you can take alongside your medication, but also check with your do- doctor that you can take these things yeah. as supplements. But how to supplement your health and how to build up your immune system. Because mm. one of the things with sickle, even cancer, many of our illnesses or diseases, disease of the body, mm. your immune system is breaking down. Yeah. 
I did an event yesterday and I had a lady sitting with me and I could just see that she just wanted to talk mm -hmm. and she was on um she had the oxygen with her mm. and she just um had a bout of pneumonia and she said I'm on this and then this is wrong with me and I just sat there for like 15 minutes talking to her mm. and it's that's sometimes it helps it helps, helps yeah. yeah what's Cause needed because mm. people want to be heard they want to they want to have a voice yeah. it's and it's so important and it's part of the, our healing this is one of the things that you know I advocate and it's getting your story out saying speaking getting your voice heard because your voice and expression is part of our healing because whatever if it's in and it's just toxic it's mm. just in your body yeah. but once you start to let it out and start to release then you do feel better and it's you know that old saying a problem share yes. problem shared problem mm -hmm. half mm -hmm. you know it's getting it out of your mind getting it out of your body and this is why sometimes we get a lot of mental health problems as well because we're just keeping it because we're culturally really? yeah we're, we're, we're you know we've got to be strong mm -hmm. and we've got to keep it to ourselves don't mm -hmm. complain I didn't tell anyone. <laughs> I feel like, um, yeah, I didn't tell anyone until she was about five, six. Okay. She had her first crisis when she was three, when myself and her dad broke up. Mm. Up till then, she didn't have any, so stress. Yeah. Transitions from primary to secondary, also losing her cousin, which was the same age, right. five, six months apart. That brought a toll on her, and we attended a funeral, and she had a really bad crisis. So we went back. Well, I remember we spent, was it 2012, August back holiday, we were in hospital. Oh. So I said, don't worry, I'll bring carnival to you. She's like, mum. <laughs> but that time, because they were taking so much blood from her, she has this thing with doctors now, that she don't like them coming near her. Oh. Any time to take blood, no. I thought you promised they weren't going to take any more. That's what she was telling me. Oh. So, and then having the children at home, wondering why is mum not there? Is, yeah. is the sister okay? And, but my youngest daughter, funny enough, when the oldest is here, <coughs> she'll come and tell me, or she'll plead to her, or she'll, she'll, I don't want to leave her. Mm. That was Carnival Sunday, just gone, she had a crisis, so I took her to a pain crisis. So, okay, episode. So, so, so what's the difference? Then so the sickle cell episode is when you have a pain episode. Sickle cell crisis is when hospital, you need to go to the hospital, the doctor. Right. So we do it on a scale of one to 10. So five, it was five out of 10, so it's average. We can manage the pain at home. She's got her penicillin, she's got her folic acid. She also takes an iron supplement at the moment as well. Um, so we manage it at home. I also do essential oils, so lavender mm -hmm. to calm her, put in this humidifier mm -hmm. to, for her room. Rub her up with heat lotion. This is one of her saving graces as well. You can sort of see it. Yeah, just pink it there. Yeah, heat lotion. She also drinks her aloes to um, cleanse out her system. And anyone, do your investigation. LRG and RG. Not saying not to take your supplement, um, your medicine, but to do your research and find out what works for you. Also check with your doctor. So these are the, some of the things that we use. And Carnival Monday, she went Carnival. I left us by. <laughs> but my fear was, all right then, is she well enough to go? But I can't pressure her and put that on her. So mm -hmm. you have to make them make their own choices. Mm -hmm. And she's 18 now, so what can I say? And I stayed home on that holiday Monday. I didn't go to Carnival because you know you can't get any reception yeah so i want to know when she leaves carnival she can contact me i'm mm -hmm. contactable so if i need to go and pick her up i can pick her up mm -hmm. but you have to give them the freedom yeah. to learn their body yeah. and have their independence and learn because i'm quite overpowering at times and you know it's my child so i had to learn to take a step back yeah and allow her to be yeah because she's, she right. she's 18 now yeah. she's 18 she's 18 so you do have to yeah, yeah and you do. but it's still like even when we went to the hospital and they're telling me about oh she can speak for herself at the time she was 17 so i had to tell them that my fitness goes until she turned 18. Right. <laughs> i can still speak on her behalf and another thing that's important for anyone that has health concerns is lasting power of attorney mm -hmm. you can register it it's a 20 page document 82 pounds to register mm -hmm. don't let anyone sell you 400 odd pounds for mm -hmm. lasting power of attorney so that's basically with the new data protection rules, yeah. no one can speak on your behalf. So right. if they decide to make a decision about your your healthcare or your finances, it's down to the hospital, the doctors. So it's something that you should really have. Yeah. So you can you Google should. it, lasting power of attorney, the document yeah. will come up wow. and you can print it off and fill it out. Okay, tell us a little bit more about it, because I didn't know about this, it's yeah. something new. Yeah, you I didn't know about it. Yeah, so tell us a bit more because so 
So for instance, if say for instance my child had six cell mm -hmm. and they're nineteen mm -hmm. and they have a crisis and the hospital say right this is the best course of action my child can't talk or is you know unable to because of the pain whatever and I'm there as the mother and I'm saying no da, da, da. what happens talk you have that. little voice the the last decision is with the doctor or the hospital because you remember data protection rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. GDPR, yeah, the GDPR. Yeah, it's all you changed. Can, now, yeah, it's changed. You can only the person that's there can speak on their behalf, even though they are compromised. They haven't given you authority to make those decisions. Wow. So when you get the last in power attorney wow. for health and well-being or mm -hmm. welfare, that gives you the right to speak on your like me to speak on my daughter's behalf. So that's mm -hmm. one of the things that I'm looking into now, okay. registering and getting her to sign it while yeah. she's in the correct state of mind. Because I realised when she was seventeen. I could still speak on her behalf because mm -hmm. they wanted to give her a blood transfusion and I said no. Right. This is okay. a crisis that she's had. It hasn't been as bad as the one in 2012. So why do you want to give her a blood transfusion? Mm -hmm. So they came to her early hours of the morning trying to persuade her that they didn't realise that my daughter was sleeping during the day when I was there <laughs> doing shift like the doctors yeah. and the nurses. <laughs> yeah. And she was up at night. So she was WhatsApping me and telling me, Mum, you know, the doctor came around at four, four o'clock this three, four this morning. Was it the Liverpool? There's something in Liverpool, I can't remember, it's Liverpool Pathway or something, where they decide early in the morning who lives or who dies. Mm. Yes. Wow, guys, so guys, guys. You guys. have to look into and research. I'll get the exact name. It's Liverpool something. I think it's Liverpool Pathway where they decide who lives or dies. So mm -hmm. I remember seeing the nurses come around and the doctor come around and say, um, bed number four, how long they've been there? Bed number three bed you know not even the they're not even by name yeah so lasting power of attorney it, for everybody really yeah because it's any of us anything could happen i could you know yeah. lose mental capacity yeah. or hit my head my family my children have no say yeah so I it's something that. yeah so lasting power of attorney 82 pound registration don't let anyone charge you excessive prices like i've experienced recently no 82 pounds yeah listen i think it's really important that we we adhere to this and I'll tell you why, because last week, is it last week? Last week, Wednesday, I knocked myself out. Yeah. How did you do that? What? Creaming my leg. It's weird. Cream. I was creaming my leg, right? I was getting ready to go, I sing, so I yeah, was yeah. getting ready to work. And I creamed my skin, everything, and I'm ready to leave, and I'm saying to my daughter, right, I'm ready to go. And I was like, I looked at my leg, a bit really neat cream, I'm like, let me just put some more cream on my leg. <laughs> Yeah, the stigma you know, yeah, dry yeah. foot. Yeah. <laughs> for real, for real. Seriously, I'm going dry foot, right? You know that. So, I, and I was in my daughter's room, so I wasn't in my own environment. It's yeah. her room. And I just put the cocoa butter on my hand and I just went down to clean my leg. And her bedpost oh. was there. And it hit me right here, oh. just off centre oh, of my face, it, yeah. right? And it cut, did a little cut. And instantly, it's like a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> Coco. But I was absolutely dazed. Dazed. I was dazed. Knocked out. Ended up going to A and E, and mm. you know, them looking over, making sure I was okay and everything. So dry foot and a unicorn. <laughs> yes. All at the same time. Imagine that. So I say that to say that you know, because when she, my daughter was trying to talk for me, they were like, "Well, can't mum talk herself?" And I'm like, "She can talk for me." <laughs> right, so you gave her the authority, yeah, to, like the, the but that is somebody that was willing to listen. listen. Yeah, but it, that was only after the fact. If an ambulance was called and I was all right, like that she, she wouldn't know. She yeah. wouldn't have been able to talk for me. No, yeah. So it's for everybody. So it is, and I'm just saying that, guys, that it's for everybody to know. This is a useful piece of information. We will be back after the break it's coming up because i can hear the music and so that's my cue to let you know <laughs> <laughs> that we will be back after break with more talk on sickle cell awareness we're going to find out a lot more um, about what it entails and what you can do to help yourself be back after the break i'm actually going to run and get the phone i've got them in the car really yeah i think they've abolished the um liverpool pathway thing have they abolished it yeah yeah they have a thing called the 
Okay. Yeah. Paying so we can, can say, we can, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can mention that as well, that there's yeah. been paid out. out. Yeah. So guys, thank you for staying with us. Thank you for staying locked in and tuned in. The Liverpool pathway. Yeah. We've been informed that they've abolished that in 2015. It. Yeah. But still, that's been abolished, but the GDPR is, is in. in full effect. So you and still so need to... you need that. And, and that, I, I don't know why they brought that in. Actually, I, I know why they brought that in. Actually, I do know why. Ah, uh, yes, for the, the uh, what's it, body parts. Yes, that's exactly. Body parts. That's, that's why they brought that in. Mm. Because if they take anybody in at the moment, yeah, and it's for you to opt out. A lot of people yeah. are going to feel like oh, what? what the, yeah, did you not know that? Parts? No, I've yeah, yeah. opted yeah. out of um. Yeah, I've heard a lot. On, the blood. Yeah. 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 You know, no, no, no. Now, you, now they've, they've opted everybody in. in. You've got to opt yourself out, and a lot of because they know that a lot of people you want to. Oh, to donor, the donor. Yeah. Oh, I've opted all of us out. I've done that. Yeah, I'm looking at my letter the other day. But then I said to myself, Sam, they don't want me anywhere to come and have treats. No, they just want your womb, so you stay there. <laughs> my womb's knackered, yes. <laughs> There is no more going on in that womb. They take your heart. I don't know about the brain now. So <laughs> <just leave it. laughs> no, they're doing womb transplants. They're doing it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? People that... Yeah, because other, other, yeah, if you think about it, the womb is still there to carry the child. It's just the eggs you carry. There was a um, case where they did a woman bump and the very first baby from a woman's bump. Oh, wow. Are yeah. you kidding me? Yeah, I saw it somewhere on social media. I can't media. believe that because it's the eggs, wow. when you get older, it's the eggs that die off. The womb is still yeah. functioning as it should be. Do you want to get the thing? Yeah, cool. <laughs> I'll be back soon. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. You're not heard. Going to have fun, guys. I have to let her in. There's, there's, yeah. oh, right. there's there for life is in the fashion, but there's not going on in my room right now. No one don't want. Sorry. <laughs> it's not up to sale. So, yeah. So, guys, those of you who are listening on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube, Thank you so much for staying tuned in. As I say, we are just going through the break and we will be back straight and we'll carry on talking and find out a bit more. I really do think it's really good to talk and find out. You know, I was thinking, I was thinking this week over the weekend in October for Black History Week, History Month, to just get some real life stories and just get people to come in and just tell their story, where, they're, where they started. Yeah, and, yeah. And where they are now, mm. you know, because this is a community radio station, and it's an urban radio station. It's very much toward geared towards the black community. Um, it's not solely, no. But it, you know, we do talk about a lot of black issues on on, on this show, and I think it would be really nice to to invite some of our listeners, some of those people who are got thirty seconds. Uh, okay, those who are listening, uh, who are listening every week who have interest in life because everybody has an interest in them yeah. these interests in life as much as they don't believe they do that i think that there's something there for everybody to learn from from another person so guys on facebook i just want to thank you for joining us this evening i hope you're getting something out this is the start of sickle cell awareness week we are about to month. go back sorry for month yeah i keep saying it. <coughs> <coughs> you're back with the paperwork i'm back with the paperwork yes welcome 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 back thank you so much guys for staying tuned in to conversations with Yvonne Michelle you have joined us today we are talking about sickle cell awareness month I have two beautiful queens in the studio with me and I make three um, <laughs> we, uh, we've been talking about sickle cell now Charmaine has brought something up um, called the lasting power of attorney and this is about health issues in general. This is a golden nugget, guys. Um, if you didn't know, now you're gonna know. It's this document here. I don't know if you can see it. It's there, it's there. I don't know if you can see it on Facebook. There you go. You can see the price on it, it says 82 pounds. Now, Charmaine, this document here, you would fill it in and then it gives the said person the power of attorney to speak on behalf 
of the person who is unwell or incapacitated at any time. Because time. Yeah. most people think, oh, you have to have an illness or you have <coughs> dementia, like my grandmother's got dementia. So I'm telling my mom, you need to get lost in power of attorney. But it's too late because she's not a reasonable person of her mind that she's not able to understand. Right. So she can't give my mom authority. So it's important for us to do these things now. Mm. So that if anything does happen to us, then for me, I know with my daughter, it's something that I need to do. Mm -hmm. Because she's 18 now. Yes. She gives me, I know she gives me authority if I'm there, but what if I'm not there? Because they said to me, so if she needs a blood transfusion before five in the morning, what are you going to do? I said, call me. I live five minutes away. I can get here in two. That's right. <laughs> and I was very adamant, but because I've grown her to be quite aware of her disease, her illness, how it affects her, mm -hmm. how to speak up for herself. So she was quite adamant in saying, I don't want a blood transfusion, but it upset her. Right. Because remember, she's on diamorphine. So at one point she was hallucinating. Like, do you understand what I'm saying? Huh? Shanique, what's this? I don't know. So oh. it's, it's those sort of things. Yeah. She, so under the influence of certain drugs, how are they going to speak on their own yeah. behalf? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes... That makes a lot so of sense. So younger children, not until that, you don't need this until they're 18. Right. So from the age of 18, I would say, or 17, going mm. on 18, you start filling out with them 18, just put through the paperwork. But it's something that's needed because the last thing they want to be thinking about is what the doctor's saying, this, that, the mm. other, what medication that, she's only thinking about what medication that is because she's in pain. Yeah. yeah. And that's, she's more yeah. focused on her healing and mm. getting better. And the thing is, you don't know that you're always going to be at hand because you could be doing something yes. down the road but just far, far, further afield than five minutes away yeah and, and like, even when i, I was know. pregnant with my last one i just thought <laughs> like sometimes the children come to me and i was like yeah do whatever because all i was focused on is my morning sickness <laughs> <laughs> you know so when she's sick i relate back to that yeah. you know when you have a flu you know you, someone come ring you about work are you interested in going into work yeah. no yeah. So it's about your healing and your health, and I think our health is important. Sometimes we overlook it. Yeah. And you know, just taking care of your health in general, and looking into, talking, telling your story. Mm. So one of the reasons why I wrote the book with Les Brown and went on my Les Brown journey is, I needed to heal because mm. I was 21 when I had her, 23, 24 when she had her first crisis. At that time, I was pregnant with my son, but I didn't know when she had her first crisis. So. A lot happened in a short space of time, then yeah. going and having the aminocentesis, and then she's sick, am I going to have two children with sickle cell, what am I going to do, how am I going to cope, can I go to work? I didn't end up going to work, but I left because the manager wasn't very understanding. Right. Imagine the school calls me in a child protection meeting, and right. she asked me, where am I going? If I said my child's got a high temperature and she's got sickle cell, could I put it on the Outlook calendar? I looked at her like, outlook, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. But luckily, my direct manager was understanding because when she's sick, I don't have time to be thinking oh, about God. outlook, calendar, yeah. or work or anything, anything like yeah. that. So for me, when my nephew passed and then when she's having these crises or sickle cell episodes, for me, it was like her health is more important. Yeah. I need to put my children first, I need to put her health first, I need to find ways in which to keep her well, so um, sickness is mm. something that comes to us all, but how are we going to manage it, how are we going to yeah. get through reading, we do affirmations, Dada Jones gave us some affirmations, I'm so calm and peaceful to calm the mind, the body and the spirit, mm. I am fine, I am fine, I am fine, and when I'm on these sickle cell groups, I'm just giving them the affirmations to say, mm. And we can all say them. Yeah. And it's just to calm the spirit because remember your mind, mind over matter, it's it can good. penetrate into illness in the body. Absolutely. Yeah. So Louise Hay as well. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So T D Jakes. Yeah. I get her to read books as well. Um to just open up her mind and understanding. The Sickle Cell Society actually has a very good book, A Parent's Guide to Understanding Sickle Cell and Thalassemia. Okay. So if you can go to the Sickle Cell website, you, you can request that? A parent's guide. A parent's guide to understanding sickle cell. That's a very good book for you to get. That is that was my little Bible, or my book that I would make reference to very often when she's having a um, um episode or when I first knew she had trait, or I had trait and she had sickle cell. So yeah, and they have also now 
brought out a booklet for the Sickle Cell Society on um, access to work. So access to work for people with sickle cell. Okay. Yeah, so it's just giving some guidelines for mm. employers and employees what are yeah. your rights and it goes back to the discrimination aspect mm. and yeah. if you write it down on how are you going to be treated. Yeah. Right. So guys, those of you who are <coughs> listening on the www dot there is a number for you to call if you have any questions in regards to sickle cell um or thalassemia anything um like that mental health within reason um the number to call is 07908 that is 07908 now what kinds of in terms of diet and types of um what can somebody who has sickle cell or is a sickle cell carer mm -hmm. do to help in terms of diet what types of things lots of greens so your spinach your kale your kale um green vegetables provide a lot of chlorophyll chlorophyll helps to cleanse the blood a very good book for everyone to read even us when a cleanse detox is supernova slum the remedy supernova Having slum the remedy. the remedy have you heard of queen of Thua? That's her son. He's a hip hop guru and mm -hmm. he's very into health and wellness. Mm -hmm. And I started to give my daughter green juices. Just like yeah. Nipsey Hustle says, make sure you eat your greens and yeah. you be vegan. So give her green juices. Even all of us have green juices. Um, so it's like a power juice. So you have wheatgrass, spirulina, dandelion greens, ginger, ginger inflammation. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you have a scoop of each and you put it in your water bowl. You can just drink it like that, but it doesn't taste very nice. Or you can have it as a power juice in the morning instead mm -hmm. of breakfast. So having your greens, um, they say yam, cassava, beetroot, carrot. Mm -hmm. So beetroot and carrot juice, you know we only used to have it on a Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're indirectly. <coughs> so beetroot and carrot juice is good. Also your beans, um, what's that? Like dal. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, red lentils, uh, chickpeas. Things, yeah, yeah, chickpeas. Well, not so much chickpeas because they can sometimes be acidic. But um, red lentils, African yam. You can make cassava punches. So, looking at those aspects of, but because it's, it's to do with the blood and changing of the shape from a yeah. normal to a crescent and it causing blockages. So if you can anything illness starts mm -hmm. with the blood. So if yeah. you can cleanse and purify your blood, you're a step there. Mm. Increase your doses of folic acid so you can have the broccoli. There's herbs as well out there so you can increase your iron. Take <coughs> vitamin C, build up your immune system. My daughter recently got told to try burdock root. It's okay. supposed to be very mm. good for sickle. So there's different like, herbal supplements, but I would say everyone's body is different, so you have to try what works for you. Yeah, we use the it. aloe vera, but there's a percentage of people that are allergic to aloe vera. Um, so eat. For your body type, I would say. Lots of fruits and vegetables. If you've been in hospital and you're coming out and you've had a sickle cell pain episode or crisis, smoothies. Mm. So increasing your smoothies. I tend to put um, chia seeds in there to build up omega-3 and 6. Yeah. Pumpkin, flax seeds. It comes in like porridge in there mm. by the time I finish. But it's just building up their immune system mm. because they're susceptible to illness. So use your diet. Mm -hmm. be your medicine and your medicine be your food and there's been a quite a lot of people that we've put because they're always ill they just don't have the time to be able to make all this mm. food that you know um shannon's talking about yeah and if you've got people that are around you family members friends then should be you should help them and uh, supply this all this nutrition food mm. but most of the time they're too ill to you know sit down and start making yam and stuff like that mm. so they just end up eating rubbish which is right yeah and then that will also bring um a sickle cell crisis very much that's a good point actually so if you yeah. do have somebody that has sickle cell be there support them yeah if you need to carry them a meal sometimes you yeah. could even freeze like yeah. they could even freeze the chunks and have it or come and make right. it for them and bring it mm. and that's like with any disease because i've yeah. got a, a, a team member right now mm. breast cancer i went and brought her vitamin c i brought her aloe and then i'm thinking of things that i can make for her to eat to yeah. build up her, mm. her system. So it's true because yeah. when my daughter's ill, 
Sometimes you just fancy a pack of noodles and you know what they said about the noodle mm. doula. They say as long as they're eating something, mm. it's better than nothing, nothing. at that time. Yeah. And when right. they regain full health, then they mm. must you do your best to try and supplement. Because um, one of the speakers that Peace invited to her event, mm -hmm. um, Black Hair event in, in, in conjunction with Sickle Cell, she actually does her own punches with croissants and yam and cashews and all these different things. Mm. And she has Sickle Cell. HBSC. Okay, and what is that? This, I can't remember what the C stands for, but that's an abnormal gene. Okay. Yeah. So, sickle cell, full blown sickle cell is normally H, well, it can be SC or SS. Right. So, sickle cell anemia is the, the, yeah. the full, the full, full, full blown. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then sickle cell. I can't, I think it's the abnormal C gene that she has along with sickle cell. And then there's the trait, which is AS. And then you could have thalassemia sickle cell, because yeah. you remember, it's yeah depends on your parents your background mm. and what you've got to remember that a lot of us culturally we're mixing right now so yeah. you don't know who we is don't know who. Yeah. yeah and that was another thing about when people think oh it's a, a black people's disease you've got a lot of uh, mixed race relationships going on now yes you don't know that the person that you're going uh, dating whether they've got the trait and i know when they're all madly in love it's, it's the last thing that comes on their mind i had a uh, back in 2000 and 14, we had um, a, lady, a, a white lady that came onto my inbox and she said, you know, she's just had a baby, the baby's got a trait. The baby was pure white, mm -hmm. there was no, the, the boyfriend was um, white, she too was white, but the baby had the trait and she couldn't understand and the, the man left her because he believed she had a relationship with a black person. Oh, so wow. they split up, so she was okay. in my inbox crying her eyes out, couldn't understand why her child had the trait. So I had to explain to her that either herself or the man himself, the background could have been that they, you know, come from it's, it's, Mediterranean or from yeah, Italian or stuff like that. So when she started to, you know, follow my page and she started to understand why it had happened to her, because I kept saying to her, go and do the test. Go okay. get your family to get do the test. And then make sure he does the test because it might have been even him that has passed the trait on to you. Yeah. But as she got used to the page and other people commented on there, she decided I don't care that she's good. She's going to look after her child. But she never took the test and accepted that her child, I think her child is now 10 now, but it was when she came to me, it was about 10 years ago. So she's wow. quite happy with the result. So it's just about, you know, change, just educating people so yeah. it's not only just a black people's disease and with the way things are going on now yes it will catch uh, people are <coughs> into marriages into relationships of all these mixed race children you never know mm. when the tra traits will appear and that's where my book came in because it's it's more or less a love story mm -hmm. um it's a fictional romantic story it kind of tells you the story of um a couple that goes through the whole devastation of losing a child because they have sickle cell and the lady decides I never want to date a black man again because she didn't want to go through that then she moves from Nigeria to the UK meets an Italian and think oh she's falling in love she gets pregnant but then what happens because obviously yeah. ignorance again so that's what this book is about the teaching them about sickle cell without actually drumming the whole medical issue into it so you read it as a love story okay that's the book for you guys to get it's called a world without sickle cell <coughs> it's on amazon and it's on amazon you can just type my name peep at all and the book comes up it's on a special deal now it's six um six ninety nine and if you've got prime time it's free delivery it's normally at 10 pounds but <laughs> yeah and it's a good book it's a good read so we've got two authors here. There's another one. <laughs> Under all <laughs> the promotion. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just trying to keep it. Oh, no, let's, let's keep it. Look, we're just making it work here, man. We're just making it work. Mine, yeah. I'll find you. So mine is, uh, I've got a chapter in this book with Les Brown. So mine is called The Root in You, and I explain my story of raising a child with a sickle cell. Did I find it? Can't remember where my chapter is. The root in you. The root in you. So basically I share my story of degree, 
having a child with sickle cell and how it changed my purpose and my passion, but also me sharing my story because I'm a very private person. I don't share very much things. I try to do a little bit more now, but I'm still very private. That's why you don't see too many Facebook lives or anything like that. But um, it's important for us to share our story. And even with you, I never knew when mm. I see me a trait. Do you understand? Because yes. it's not like something you go up to someone and say, yeah. Yeah, do you understand? Yeah. But yeah. it does bring awareness and it does help other people mm. us talking about this to see that you know oh, that's someone like me and they're going through that but yeah. behind all of this that we're on the radio and we're doing this and we're doing that we're also managing life mm. absolutely and that's what we do need to push because sometimes with social media you get especially yeah. I know it's with Instagram you can get caught up in the high life and all this but behind closed doors what's going on yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, and those it's conversations isn't it? Yeah. It, the, social media creates a perception people just see you as this person, they look at the pictures, you know, and some pictures are, you know, you've got, um, what are they called? Filter. Filter. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's no filter. There's, no, there's no filter. <laughs> there's no filter. <laughs> filter. <laughs> there's not a filter. Right. So, you know, there's no filter going on here, but, you know, sometimes people see these things and they think, oh, that person's life is so perfect they've got it all together but actually you don't know what goes on behind closed doors I look, that's a good example of that i mean everybody mm -hmm. knows that i'm a facebook guru and i've been off facebook uh, more this year because i had my own issues going on mm -hmm. and just like Charmaine is, Charmaine was saying that she's a personal i don't go on facebook and tell you oh this is what's going on with me i just put that big smile on my face, mm -hmm. have a photograph, and then uh, the, everybody's liking, but I'm going through hell, I've been going through hell. This is me now coming back to mm -hmm. create awareness. I've kind of dropped off the yeah. whole thing. I get she has me, been very, even events. Quite yeah, even the event, you call me yeah. for an event, and I'll give, I'll give you one excuse, but I'm just, cause I don't want to tell you what's going on, because you can't solve my problems. But I know that talking about it mm -hmm. can help. I'm very good at, Telling people you need to talk about your yeah. problems. <laughs> in my own, you just leave me to deal with it, and that's what I've been doing. But to be honest, it works for me, but I know it doesn't work for a lot of people because mm. now I've been able to. It, this is I've been going through a lot of things since January, and I've kind of struggled and gone through it, and I've come out the other. Well, I think I've come out the other way. Um, I mean, this is your your um, inbox message to come on this show is like for this. This is going to be the first one this year because I just thought wow. to myself, I'm not, I'm not in the, I'm going to wait till 2020 when I think maybe I'm in a better place. Mm -hmm. But I just thought every month it's just getting worse, it's getting <laughs> yeah. worse, yeah. It's not getting a better place. And then I thought to myself, next week also we've got the, the community uh, mile walk in North London starting from St Anne's Hospital. And I thought to myself, I agreed to do this last year, September. And then all of a sudden, it's creeped up. It's next week, and I'm thinking, I better get motivated. I better get back on on Facebook and start telling people that we're doing this to make people to support and do mm -hmm. whatever. But I wasn't really in the right frame of mind to do it. But I thought to myself, this is something I've dedicated my life to. Why am I now letting mm -hmm. my issues overcome what I've been so passionate about? So this now has kind of given me that boost to get back you know on the bike and ride i mean i'm not going to tell you what my issues are because like i said i only tell people that can help mm -hmm. and at this time i don't think anyone on my facebook page can help <laughs> 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 no point. And well, if you no. can if, was it peace <laughs> which is not a lot of people can do that. Everybody says to me, oh, PC, you're so strong. There are a few people that know what I've been going mm -hmm. through, mm -hmm. my you know, family background and all that stuff. They know, and they'll be like, how do you do it? And, you know, I just say, you know, the Lord is my strength. Physician, heal thyself. Yes. Come on now. That's it. So and it, doesn't on. Help, it doesn't work for everyone. So like I said to you, I'm good at, uh, I don't practice what I preach. Yeah. All the time. None, none of us well, do all the time. <laughs> all the time. But I always say, you know, just like you said earlier on, problems um, shared into problems. Problem so yeah. yeah. So.
it just depends on how big your problems are and my I don't do small problems they're always big mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. you've got to change that declaration yeah. <laughs> you're putting it out there yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 but even when you have an illness it's, people don't like to share mm. no until because I know my team member she didn't share with me she had breast cancer and I think it's been going on for a while mm. right. it was at a point when she said well, she needed some products but at the same time she's like well I've got this and I said what she didn't say what it was. I said, mm. what, the thing? Because my grandmother died of breast cancer. Right. But she would never claim it. Mm. Right. So even when I was driving down, I was thinking, do I go on and say I have sickle cell trait or do I say they've told me I have sickle cell trait? But part of it, you have to own it in a way that's acceptable to you. Mm. So that's why sickle cell warriors, mm. they're fighting it, mm. you know? Or sickle cell disease. Mm. You can say sickle cell anemia. Sometimes you say disease, some people think, mm. oh, yeah, yeah. You understand? So I like to say disorder, I never call it disease. Because yeah. 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 people just feel, that's like, no, I mean, so yeah. I just say I disorder. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, with, with thalassemia, it's like, I ha- I've i been told I have the trait, so I have the trait, but it's like, it is nothing. It, mm. it, it doesn't have a, a shape or a form or mm. a, a thing. <coughs> in my in my head, it's just a yeah. name yeah. that the doctors decided that I have, have. Mm-hmm. but it doesn't affect me as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah, you know, and and I'm like that. Not many things do mm-hmm. affect me. I just you know, that's the way I get on. They know you hear me just cough, <coughs> coughing every minute, but I just get on, mm. and you know, I might have a sneezing fit but on air all the time, yeah. and someone, might, some other person might say. Oh, I can't do that because this thing, mm. but it's well, it, it's just, it, just, just get on with it. Yeah. On with it. Mm. And I think that you know, as your warriors are, they're getting on with it. Yeah, mm. they haven't got a choice. That's the problem. Yeah, just you're just getting mm. on with it. And you know, I want to just send a big respect out to everybody who is listening who mm. does um, suffer with sickle cell disorder. I think I think I prefer the word disorder. I think I don't. I'm not even sure about that. <coughs> but I want to salute you this evening and you know just encourage you to um, find the best way to navigate your life what's going to be best for you um, and like Charmaine has said she's got some of these um, forever living products here that help yeah because I've, I've been doing forever living alongside my employment since two yeah you were about a couple of months after my nephew passed. Okay. Yeah. Um. Because what we were finding is we were spending too many hours at work. There weren't enough hours with the children. Mm. And my sister put it out there after he passed and said, "Oh, I want to find something in the health industry which is going to help people." Mm. That Saturday, I think my niece wanted something in a chicken and chip shop in <laughs> South London, and she went in there. She met her upline. And oh, she was like, "Do I do it, Shannon? Should I do it?" And then she joined. So she joins, and then I. Well, I didn't join. I was just using their products. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm at work and I've got this. And then I joined and then I found the benefits of using it myself as mm-hmm. well and how it's helped. But as I say, you have to find what works for you. You yeah. continue to take your medication, seek approval from your doctor and find out what works for you. Because not, every, not everything works for one person. No. Yeah. So those of you who are just joining us, I'd just like to welcome you and thank you for joining Conversations with Yvonne Michelle. Um, We are talking about sickle cell. It's Sickle Cell Awareness Month this whole month of September. And um, I do want to do a bit more on sickle cell throughout the month, actually, because it would be a shame to just have this one hit Mm -hmm. when it is such a big topic Mm -hmm. and it affects so many different people. So I would like to um, ask if you know anyone else who would like to tell their story they don't have to be you know a coach or anything like that they just want to tell their story yeah i would love to have them on my show just to inspire other Mm -hmm. sufferers as well um i know that we are coming up to a commercial break shortly um so yeah i can hear the music (laughs) 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 so we'll be back um after the break and we will be talking more and more about sickle cell awareness. But I would like you to send your questions in 
you have any questions for our panel this please do um send your answer questions not answers in after the break <coughs> <coughs> If they're listening in, they want to come in and speak. Yes, if you want to come in and speak. Oh, it's like this, yeah. I can see. Because normally I have my phone, but my phone is in the car. I don't know. I guess at the end we can forward. We can share the link. Yeah, we can. I was trying to do it like in my paper. I couldn't get it. Could you not make it? No. Whose jacket is that you've got? That's mine. Sorry. This is so lucky. What are you looking for? My car key. Is it here? You see? Is that? Yeah. In the, it's in the um the armrest. Lift it up and it's in there. Thank you. Why did my data finish? You can link in first. You can link in first. There's a way that you can link into it. Uh, yes, you can share it on the front of one. Um, yeah, I went to your page. <coughs> and then, it was oh, you're on, on my other page. You should be on the main one. You posted it on your main one. You did. Share it. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. You can do it on the party or you can share it. Did I put it on conversation? No. Oh, I was going to put it on conversation. It's, it's shared in conversation. Oh, did you share it? Yeah, but the thing is, I can't see, I'll, I'll write all the links, but I can't see anything. So that's what I was doing before, writing on conversations, but no one can see the questions because they were on your live one, on your oh. main one. But I can't see. Contact the box office. Okay. Come here, go. Oh, there you go. I can't see that. Yeah, I want it now, yeah. Two, six. So have you not been on for a little while? Um, no, I took the last month off because I've been sorting out getting back my money for that particular thing that someone tried to overcharge me for. Am I doing? No, you never. That's bad money on the weekend. You get your money back. Right back. Yeah. 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 You have to just turn your phone down. And welcome back to Conversations with Yvonne Michelle. Um, if you've just joined us, we are talking about sickle cell um, life with it, life without it. We've got two amazing queens <coughs> in the studio today. Do excuse me, I have a bit of a cough today. I don't know what's going on with me. But we have two amazing queens in the in the uh, studio today both are authors um and both are sickle cell the sickle cell disorder advocates they work around sickle cell they know about sickle cell and they are helping people within the community their community and further afield to um overcome and to live with uh sickle cell so we have charmaine smith and we have peace Adatoro, that's it. See, you see, I love it. This is helping me with the For those of you who watch regularly, no. The, the shark diver. <laughs> this, is, this lady fights with sharks. You don't yeah. run it, you know. Don't play. Teresa, I said to her, peace. She goes, oh, you've got my full support from far. Oh. <laughs> and her son, it was so oh, cute. Dear. If you go on her page, her son was outside watching, isn't it? <laughs> Tabby going, Mom! Oh, no. I love it. They actually say you're swimming with sharks. I've actually just stood at the bottom of the tank going, 
Three times. How long have I got? Oh, God, have I got Let's go. Did you seriously in that tank? Yeah, I was in a tank and the sharks were sort of above you. And I just they said to me, you've been there for about eight minutes and I'm there counting one, two, three, all the way to six, so that's one minute. <laughs> wow. How long was you in there for? It's supposed to be eight minutes, but it felt like an hour. <laughs> Whoa. So the closest I've got is the man in the aquarium. I've walked with sharks past them. <laughs> Let me tell you how close I have been. You see the TV screen with jaws. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is this is someone that dog. doesn't. I don't do Dance. animals whatsoever. I have no animal lover. Even the little tiny fish that was living swimming around my feet was like, mm, go away from me, don't touch me. That when they're supposed to tell me with third Peter that you should use the sand and it it they like it and I was like, I'm so a sand for what? You just rip, you just sort of like pull the sand on the fish and they loved it. And I said, I'm not moving because there's maybe one <laughs> false move and that shark above my head is coming for me. So I just stood still. <laughs> wow. She was prepping herself for months. <laughs> you know, we had, we, the first time we, we drove all the way down, to, down there was not, nearly somewhere near Wales and we, were, we missed it. It was late. We went too late. So we had to go a second time. Oh, but I felt good. But then I thought everybody had, you know, supported me, they sponsored me, there was mm -hmm. no way I could get out of it. And the, the people said, well, you jumped out of a plane, you swam with shark, what else are you going to do? And I was like, I think I've done it all now, there's nothing really... Wow. More. So, so how much money did you raise? Um, for that particular one was about £400. I mean, it's not very much, but I mean... Mm. Yeah. To swim with a shark? Mm. Well... Like I said, as we, we say swim with the shark, I was stood at the bottom of the, the tank, <laughs> not even moving. <laughs> I don't even think Seriously. I was breathing. <laughs> was it? Did you do live then? Did you do yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. On, it's on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's on YouTube. It's live. This is one brave lady, guys. I'm not really, I just... It, you this, are, because I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry I ain't doing that. Good evening, JJ, yeah. how you doing? How you I doing? do the advocacy, but she's doing the shark she, live. Listen, right? <laughs> even when I jumped out of the plane, I've been looking at hours. They had a little interview at the beginning before you got onto the plane, and I couldn't even, I didn't even know my son's <coughs> name. I couldn't even remember his name when I was doing the interview. And then uh, we got onto the plane. This lady was, she was 87 years old. She was jumping out because she was raising money for, um, I think, what's it? Let me forget. Dementia. 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 And, I, and I thought to myself, Woman, eight, seven years old, can jump out of place. Why, wow. why am I sitting here just shaking like a leaf? So I had to sort of like pop up myself. But and did you jump out with someone? Yeah, um, I was. Yeah, I was. Um, <laughs> he was on my back. And the thing is, when you're going down, they did, well, they t tell you they prep you at the beginning and they tell you what you're supposed to do. But they never told me I was how I was supposed to breathe. So I was. <laughs> <laughs> No, you're just supposed to just breathe anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you don't hold your breath. She was holding her breath. Yeah, you don't hold your breath. <laughs> you couldn't. I, was, I couldn't breathe, and then the goggles kept coming off. So I was struggling with the goggles to put them on, and then I had my. When I jumped out, they, they were jumping off out like this. My thumbs stuck all the way till I got to the ground. So See, I, this is the piece I know. Because I paid for the video to video the whole thing, so I, this is how I. Had it. And I was like this, and the thumbs didn't move. So all the way to the bottom of the ground. And then the man asked me, would I do it again? I said, no. It was a wonderful experience, but you'll never see me again. I might inspire Von. But you know what? I've, I've said for the last couple of years, I'm going to do that. Oh, do my it. 50th. This is my 50th year. Do it. So it's going to be at some stage, probably be next year, just before 51. Do it. You'll be, I mean... Once you've but done I don't it, know what I'm raising for yet. I haven't, I haven't decided because I'm not just gonna do it for the sake, sake of doing, of doing it. it. Yeah, you know, I've shaved my head. I've shaved I my head completely bald before mm. for for uh, cause, cause for yeah. young boys' cancer treatment. Yeah, and um, I do the advocacy as well as that. Just yeah, so I've I've done that. Got fear of heights. I think you need to do it. I had, I've got a fear of heights as well, but the five my five year old laughs at me. I said, I'm not scared of heights. Yes, you are, mum. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow! I've got a fear of everything, but I just love a challenge. I just love. I a love challenge. a challenge too yeah. from the ground. Yeah. Yeah, true. I, I'm not. I <laughs> climbed a ninety foot pole and, and swung off it. Jumped off like a trapeze. Yeah. No. I, I do stuff, but that wasn't that wasn't even for charity. That mm. was with a group of young, young people. people. Mm. Okay. Yeah. You know, taking you have, them out on yeah. a, and to help to build their self esteem and stuff. And you were doing all of these. Kayaking and all the coming, you know, like what a thing, nothing mm. to do with 
I think I prefer to do the shaman thing. Mm-hmm. The, the, the I'm not into that. I'll probably be like, peace. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, it would. That's the way I would from the minute I. You have to go Where on can you, we watch this piece? It's on my page on YouTube. What's your page on YouTube? Yeah, it's it's Peace Adatoro. Peace <laughs> Adatoro. Do go onto her fa- uh, 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 YouTube channel and watch her. I'm going on there. You've got it on your own World Without Sickle Soul. It's on the World Without Sickle as well. World Without Sickle Soul. Oh, you go see me there. coming out of the plane and my thumbs are up and it's how it was all the way till I got to the ground. Didn't move, couldn't breathe. And then the silly man didn't, when he, you know, the parachute goes up. I thought he had left me because he didn't tell me because it becomes lighter. So I thought he had gone. And I thought, what if I didn't tell me he was going to leave me in this air? <laughs> and then he sort of, the guy sort of felt that I was panicking, so he, he tapped me to let me know. <laughs> All that is on the video. I was like, so you could look around in it. Where's the man? He's like, he got I was like this, and the man was like, as soon as he put the parachute up, I felt like I was on my own. And I was like, he didn't tell me that when I was down, <laughs> down on doing the pet. And then he just, he saw the panic because my legs were all swinging everywhere. He was like, he said, I'm here. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Never oh, again. My I love my warriors, mm-hmm. but there's certain things you don't do twice. <laughs> Wow. Well, you know what I say? Never say never, because you never know. Another opportunity might. <laughs> just looking at me. Another opportunity <laughs> might come your way. It'll have to be more than four hundred, and some, oh, of that, yeah, some of that money will have to be coming to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you put your life on the line like that, come on. Yeah. Even when the people in Nigeria wishing me, you know, to reduce the population. That was part of it. <laughs> that wow. spurred you on more to do. It didn't did, you? yes. Yeah. And I put that video right back into that um, news feed. To that news feed, and everybody was like, "Oh my God, you're so brave!" You did. Even that idiot had to, you know, mm. eat his words. Because I remember when you was going to do the shark dive, I said, and you told me that you did the skydive. I was like, "Send it to me," because she was panicking with the shark. And I said, "Why is she panicking so much?" She goes, "Shani, did you see me when I?" Just go? <laughs> and 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 does it only go above your head? It don't go around the. Are you, are you in the middle? Of the all, all of that was I checked. I said, "Is just going across over my head?" He said, "Yes." If anything was going to come round, I probably would have died in the, in there. And then you sickle cell would it? They would have. Everybody would have heard about sickle cell awareness mm-hmm. if I had actually been eaten by a shark. Yeah, I would have created. Woman eaten have, by a shark if she tries to raise a bunch of sickle cell. I would have created awareness anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that. No, 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 I don't want to be someone's shark's dinner. I'm, I'm just sitting there like, is my, my hand is like this, you know, because I'm like... <laughs> well, the man, the man told me they've been fed. Yeah. <laughs> she said, like, that's any consolation. Lord, Lord have mercy. Can you hear this, guys? <laughs> the man said the sharks had already... Listen, you are an absolute warrior. You are... Do you know, I didn't know... My, I respect you so much. My goodness, you are awesome. <laughs> oh, A shark you. tank, you know. That's on an, I wouldn't even think of that. The flying out the plane is one thing, but I would not think. I was trying everything to, you know, everything and everything to create awareness. I don't even know what to do now to even, you know, beat what I've already we done. Can look up a few things. Um, <laughs> <that coming. laughs> climb let's, up the shard Let's something. just leave it for next week, Isn't the it? 14th of September, <laughs> doing my community mile. Climb up Mount Everest or something. something like no, that. No, that's where I draw the line in it. I'm yeah, going I to no Mount Everest. Okay. I'm not going to the North Pole. Oh, yeah, I was going to uh, say the Arctic. Uh, none of them. No, no, no. no. There's one How thing. about a mountain like Mount Sinai? I climb Mount Sinai. No, no, no. That was in the night. In the the night. I don't like the heights. <laughs> no, but it's, it's at night, so you, you can't see. That's even worse. Even worse. You can't see. It's great. You should do it. No, no, no. And, then, and then in the morning, you climb at night. And then you see the sun, and by the time you get there, the sun rises right there, right in your eye. No. It's beautiful. No. no. You can't say I didn't try, guys. No, 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 no. Well, if you want to do something, you need to get the producers <laughs> to make this book into a film. That will create awareness. Sure. <laughs> yes. And the good thing about this book is that I've had a lot of people that have got sickle cell, that have read this book and have given me the thumbs up. Because it means sometimes you're writing about an illness or about mm-hmm. something and you, it's getting the the thumbs up from people that are going through it mm-hmm. and they have given and because I've listened I've been creating awareness for so long I've listened to a lot of people's stories mm-hmm. and I've seen what how it affects my friend who she died in 2016 the book is actually dedicated to her when I decided to write the book 
I was trying to tell her what how what I wanted how this book to play out, and she was going no 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 no. I must have tell her that she wants to read the book as soon as it's done. She never got to do that, mm. and um, I had a mental block for about a year after her death because I couldn't really because I used to she used to give me a lot of tips on how, what she's feeling and the medicine how she was treated in the hospital, mm -hmm. and I included all of that in this book. And the one thing that hurt me the most was that she never got to read it. If she had allowed me to tell her the story of what I was trying to curate, yeah. I would have felt much better. But, but she's know, part of that book. Well, she, she's part she's of definitely book, yeah. part of this book. Mm. Definitely. And um, wherever she is, she rest in peace. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a lovely dedication. So we want you to go out and get this book. All right, get it on Amazon. I think I met you that time when you had the mental block. Both are available on Amazon. Do go out, do support um, both authors um, in their books, and also because it does help towards creating awareness for sickle cell. And we really need to do that. I think sickle cell is probably one of the, you know, one of the most um, underspoken about uh, medical issues. And even in relation to PIP. Yeah, independence payment. It's very hard for sicklers. Well, I've been caught, I've been writing extreme. to ITV, BBC to go on their morning shows to come and talk about sickle cell because September is Sickle Cell Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. Do you get a response? No, mm -hmm. because they feel like it's probably just something that yeah. happens to black people. So, so do you know what? What we need to do then is create our own, our own forums mm -hmm. like this. I mean, I do this on a live. On, on the radio but I also do lives at home mm. and if I'm on in terms of live broadcasting this my Monday night show does okay but I actually do a lot better on, your lives. on my lives yeah and maybe this is something that we should do again mm -hmm. um, off radio but just live, live just a candid conversation on the sofa with a yeah. couple of glasses of wine just have, have a chat. chat yeah because yeah. I asked my um, daughter's psychologist at the Sickle Cell Society, how come the sicklers aren't getting the pick? Mm. This was when she was in hospital, it was very hard mm. for them to get Because you've the got pick. to personal independence payment, yeah. disability oh, living allowance yeah. is replaced. So with my daughter I applied and I managed to get um, the carer's component of it, mm -hmm. but not the physical, because you couldn't evidence it, how it affected her, even though if she walks a long distance, her legs give way. Mm -hmm. She gets out of breath, she gets tired, lethargic. That's the time when I did have my car when she was getting sick. Yeah, sick, 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 sick. So <coughs> I took a little bit of time off the radio to sort out my car because I know that's her feet, basically. Mm -hmm. But now we applied for people and we'd have to appeal it in order to get it. But it's very hard because you have to meet certain criteria. Yeah. So appeal, appeal it. Yeah, so for me, I would appeal it, yes. But at the same time, let me get up my money so that she doesn't have to rely on that. Yeah. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So do things that will set her foundation for her. Absolutely. Yeah. But if you yeah. are accessing benefits, then by all means you're entitled to them. So go ahead and do it. Yeah. yeah. And Absolutely. get all the information you need from your practitioners, mm -hmm. psychologists, whoever, and evidence it because that's what it is. And meeting, as you say, meeting certain criteria. Yeah. Because my son, he's um, on the autistic uh, spectrum, and he's going to be 16 in December. So I got a letter just like today, actually, mm -hmm. about you know when he's. 16 as he now has to apply for the yeah, independence that's what the disability when he's, he's going time. i mean it's just the same with where my family members say oh you you know you've got a child that's autistic why are you not um advocating um autism and adhd i said because it's not a, a disease that knows that you know yeah, well, that's color. Color. yeah so everybody's doing everyone, yeah, yeah, yeah when, when you say to someone oh your child is is autistic or they've got ADHD immediately they don't need to question you anymore or when they say oh the person suffers from cancer they don't need to no. ask a second <coughs> question because they don't even need to know whether it's breast cancer or lung cancer the fact that C word alone is already it giving takes, you it takes precedence, that precedent so but when you say oh someone's got sickle cell they you need to start to explain oh, how, how long have you had, had it? it yeah, yeah how long have you I look in their face like Sorry, I shouldn't laugh. Yeah, they are just, just like, really? <laughs> Good evening, those of you who are just joining us. We are having a conversation about sickle cell. It is Sickle Cell Awareness Month this month of September. And that's what we are talking about this evening. Wealth of information by these two lovely queens sitting here talking about 
a sickle cell and how it affects. And as Charmaine was just saying, you know, um, in terms of benefits, how difficult it is for um, sicklers to get the benefit. And you'll get questions like, how long have you had mm. sickle cell? You is know. it contagious? <coughs> yep. And going into a pill, because you know with the state of the personal dependent payment anyway, even people with severe other illnesses are having problems. So yeah. you can imagine for a sickler that can't evidence it. It's yeah. like lupus. Yeah. How are you going to evidence it? Because it's one of those hidden... Yeah, it's a, it's yeah. a, it's a yeah. Hidden, hidden disorder, So which happens to be... And lupus is, is very much... In is that, it's black, a lot of black, black people, a lot of Latino people. <coughs> it and seems to affect us more. Because yeah. I know other people that even they say with asthma, it's easier to get personal payment for asthma than it is for a sick person. Mm. And I'm thinking, well, how? When one's more severe. Mm. But then if you think about the amount of people with sickle cell, yeah. what's the give plus and the yeah. But the thing is, with the people that do have sickle cell, are they, are they claiming for that? And that's the thing. Some will claim, I was reluctant at first to claim, mm. but then when I saw the nature of the illness and how it affected my daughter, well, I said, well, I'm entitled to claim, because at the end, right. end of the day, when I could evidence it, it was a simple thing like chicken box. Right. And I think at that time she was nine, eight or nine, and she had chicken pox, and then my son had chicken pox. Mm -hmm. So he had it for about a week, it cleared up, when she had it, and I wrote a diary. Right. to see the difference in care that I had to do because I had to make sure she had extra food then I had to make sure she had her medication then I had to be up at night watching her right. do you understand? Yeah. Whereas my son just put the little cream on him make sure he's got his food make sure he eats he's yeah. fine yeah. but with her I was monitoring her to make sure it doesn't turn into a crisis because how yeah. it's affecting her her immune system is down how mm -hmm. is it going to trigger and I could evidence the extra care that I had to give her Yeah, I, I think I literally even cried in the <laughs> um, appeal and I was wondering what's going on, but all those emotions of caring for her came back at that particular point because mm -hmm. I was so used to just getting on, getting on and doing it. It came yeah. like second nature. Mm -hmm. It's only when you had to evidence on paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even like when you're writing and you're seeing what you've actually been through, your story, mm -hmm. you actually remember thinking, I've been through a lot and how did I manage to come through right. this? Yeah. And it's the same when I went in there for the appeal. They're wondering, why is she crying? But I'm crying because... I've done this all, and you are sitting there saying that no, we're not going to give her. Mm. Yeah, as the judge, really judging you and your child's illness, actually kind of putting it yeah. on a benchmark. Of, well, you know, this is the worst. Yeah, this is the, you know, because it's hard. It, yeah. And I'll say, if you do want to do PIP, get a diary, mm -hmm. journal, evidence your daily activities with the child when you have to give them medication, mm. when there's bed wetting, they're tired, lethargic, attendance certificate from the school. Right doctors, advocate of the Sickle Cell Society, mm -hmm. psychologists, get them to write supporting documents for you so you can really push it through. And That's even fair. other people that have done the fit before mm -hmm. offering their advice and assistance because there's certain criteria you have to hit and normally when you're just writing general, you don't know if you're hitting that criteria right. or not. It's you hard work because obviously trying to um, convince the PIP uh, that you know this is a devastating illness it's, it's quite hard. Even the medical um, doctors yeah. and the nurses, and what they it? look at them, look down on people with sickle cell, that they're put in your arm, they just want yeah. the, the hard drugs pain, and the medication and stuff like that. So sometimes if you can't convince addictive. your medical staff, how are you going to convince someone yeah. in the government? I'm more because sometimes when you say, can I have some more and I need it? Or you go into accident and emergency, there's a procedure that when you have sickle cell, you go, sh like when they're paediatric um, children, they go straight into... You don't have to wait in the waiting area. Yeah, now can. when it came on to 17, 18, she's a big girl, so mm. where's she going in feeds? So there was a dispute. Four hours in the waiting room area of the hospital of accident emergency, deciding if she's going to feeds or if she's going to um, adult. adult. I slept <coughs> on the chairs, them hard chairs over her. I had to make up a fuss, as we were saying about kicking up a fuss. Yeah. Make up a fuss with the nurses at one, two in the morning saying, what's happening, where is she going? Don't right. let me take this further. Right. To get a result. So you can understand you're watching your child sick, your child's sick, and you're in the accident emergency waiting area with other people that mm. have got all these different things wrong with them. So when she go pick up something everything. else, yeah. Mm -hmm. You what's happening? Yeah. And then it's also nurses, doctors, them understanding as well. Because mm -hmm. they've had their training, but do they come into contact no. with that? Yeah. Well guys, you've heard a lot this evening. We've gone through, covered a lot. There's a lot of emotion that goes with most illnesses mm. as well as this. Because I really want this month 
for sickle cell to really stand out um, so that we become more, I become more aware of it, you become, we all become more aware of what this is and how it affects our community, how it affects our children. You know, we really need to just take a pause a minute and really have a look at this and think how well, how are we supporting those in the community? What can we do more and how can we raise more awareness? And I think that is the key thing, is the raising of the awareness mm. so that the ignorance can die. Yeah. And providing the solutions like he said before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Providing the solutions. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And go out and do all those crazy things that the warriors can't do just for people that are watching or listening, um, just to let you know that you know this is a devastating disease, and without you know your support, we're going nowhere. This this disease has been around for over a hundred mm. years, and it doesn't look like we're going getting any. Yeah, a good some someone good to access as well is the Scarf Sickle Cell Foundation, mm. and I've accessed him, Dr. Melville Jones. He was in the Voice newspaper and also in the New Nation newspaper many years ago. But he has a foundation, so those that maybe can't afford to get additional holistic treatment, he mm -hmm. does have a foundation where he does it at a reduced price. Okay. And I've actually mm -hmm. accessed him myself with my daughter when she went into hospital after the Les Brown cruise to greatness when I met Les Brown. And he's helped our family tremendously. So different ways of managing sickle cell in mm. addition to taking mm. affirmations, Reiki, mm. essential oils. At first, I looked at him like. And as you mentioned Reiki, <laughs> as you mentioned that, <laughs> yoga, because as you mentioned that, chanting your vows, as you mentioned that, <laughs> as you mentioned, because I know that we as a people, we got a little thing going on, we're oh, that Reiki, oh, yeah. oh, no, oh, oh, and we start, no, that's black magic, and other. listen, you got to be open, God gave us knowledge to use it, so why we're not using it? Wonderful. We have three minutes left of the show, guys. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> three minutes. Like when she switches. <laughs> <laughs> There's three minutes. Oh, okay, three minutes left. But I just want to say this. We have to become more open as a people. And we have to start supporting one another more. So when you see people, because I didn't know that you did all of this. You've only kind of re recently come on my radar. I don't really know. So... Peace is the shark tank lady, yeah? <laughs> 400 pounds, are you kidding me? Sorry, no, I, in the last two minutes, I have to say this, we need to do better. Come on, 400 pounds, she's wearing a tank with a shark dread. 400, really? Now, come on, guys, we need to support each other more, all right? That's all I'm saying. I'm not beating you with my stick. I'm not telling you off, but I am saying to you, come on, we need to do better. This is 2019. <coughs> and if we're going to progress, we've got to progress together. We can't do it individually. So when you see causes like this, get involved, put your hand in your pocket and support. Yeah, it's going to a good cause. I'm joining the um, sickle cell cause on the 14th of September in the uh, sickle cell mile, community mile walk. We're starting from St. Anne's Hospital and it's supposed to be a two and a half hours god help me and back to the hospital again so um, it's a walk is it's it a walk, walk. Oh, I'll that's you right. yeah, it's on the 14th of september so where is um, it a sponsor thing yeah it's um the sc course uh there and is it too to... late to join um the, 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 what's the name no oh. it's not because it's the money the money is supposed to be in for the 10 pounds joining fee by the 7th of september okay so, so that's we'll join got a couple of days oh that's 14 yeah i can't got one minute yeah. one minute left of the show i'm just going to try and work out these ladies and see if i can actually do that on the 14th but i do believe i've already got this commitment but that doesn't mean to say that i can't sponsor you so i can yeah. so whatever you can do to help peace can you do you have a digital sponsor for yes i've got right. it on, i've got it on my page can you can you share it on your page. on my page yeah I will. And we will take it from there. And are you doing it? I'm gonna put my name down to do it. I'll right. do the walk. I ain't jumping out of no plane or swimming. Come so on, Charmaine. So if we I'll do the walk. <laughs> yeah. If we I'm a woman. I don't need to know that. <laughs> if we can help each other.
each other more, let's do that. But for now, it's come to the end of the show. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. We will be back here next week. I've got um, Rashima. Not Rashima. No, it's not Rashima. Hanifa. That's it. I don't know where Rashima came from. But Hanifa will be here with us next week. I've also got other guests. I can't remember off the top of my head. Sorry. But you'll see it on my Facebook. You'll see it on Instagram. And you'll see it on uh, YouTube. You'll see it all over the place. Do remember to join me next week between the hours of 8 and 10. And there may even be a Facebook Live Home edition. All right, so I'm out of here for now. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye, bye, bye. <coughs> <coughs>